All right, so let's look at how binary search works uh, sort of visually before you have a chance to implement it today. Um, and, and here's the trick. So I'm gonna create a little array here uh, and I'll have, I think, let's see, uh, eight values in this array. All right, um, so here's the problem. Let's say I fill this array with random data and it's not uh, sorted in any way. Um, and now let's say I'm trying to determine if this array continues the value one. Well, with an unsorted array, the best I can do is look everywhere. I have no idea where the value that I'm looking for would be. It could be the first value, it could be the last value, it could be anywhere. And so the only thing I can do is just sort of go one by 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 one. Now in this one, I would stop here, but let's say I was looking for like nine or something that wasn't in the array. So I would end up going all the way through the array and as we talked about before, this results in an ON uh, runtime because I don't have anywhere, I don't have any idea where to look. And that's the, the problem with unsorted data in array is that the structure of the data in the array is not helping me. Now, sometimes the structure of the data in the array means something else. The metadata that we're associating with the data is important for some other reason. And so we can't store it in some other order, at which point this might be the best that we can do. But if our goal is to enable search, let's say that I have a, an approach where a cat walks by, hey, no, 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 it's not for you. Um, let's say I have an approach where my, the whole point of storing this data is that I want to be able to look up values quickly. Uh, so now let's, let's imagine I'm gonna start over here. I'm gonna store the data, but I'm gonna sort it. I'm gonna maintain it in a sorted state. So you can imagine that there's a bunch of different ways to do this. You know, maybe I sort it periodically before I do a search. Maybe when I insert items into it, I sort it. Um, you know, I make sure that it maintains this, this sorted properly. And so in this case, I'm gonna have it assorted in ascending order, um, 12 and 14. Okay, great. Uh, and these values could be anything. Um, hey, scoot over. The cat's gonna try to help, I think. I think she likes the smell. Um, all right, so I've, I've got this data here. Hey, you can't see. You can come over here if you want to help explain. Um, and now let's say I, I want to start looking for a value in the, in the array. This is not helping here. All right, your tail's very pretty, but I think students would rather see the actual information that I'm trying to convey here. Oh. All right, I'm only leaving this in because it's the day before Thanksgiving. Get off here. Ah. All right, back to it. <laughs> All right, she's been chastised. She's still here, don't worry. No cat abuse is taking place. I have sorted data in the array. I wanna look for a value. Now I could do the same thing I just did. I could go through an order, but I can do something smarter than that. And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use the data in the, that's already in the array to help guide me to the value that I'm looking for. So let's imagine I'm looking for the value, let's look for something that's in the array. Let's look for the value five, okay? So how am I gonna use the structure of the array? Well, I'm gonna go halfway. And this array has eight items, and so halfway could be either the fourth item or the fifth item. I'll choose the fifth item, and I'm gonna look at that item. And it says eight. Now the value I'm looking for is five. And so immediately I can rule out, well, first of all, I know it's not eight. And so I don't have to check that value, but I can rule out all the rest of the array. Blame the cat for these technical difficulties. So here's what I have left, right? Um, okay, so now I'm still looking for five. And what did I do? I made the problem half as small. That was one step. I compared with eight, which was here, and then I was able to say it can't, it, it's smaller than eight, and so it can't be in this whole section of the array. So I've, I, I started with eight values to search through, now I have four. All right, so now I go halfway through this, um, and now I pick five, and I'm done. I found the value. But let's imagine I'm looking for the value four, right? Um, so in this case, four is less than five, meaning that it, it would be over here, and I can again, eliminate a big chunk of the values that I'm looking for all in one fell swoop. And so I know if the value is in the array, it has to be in this section. Now again, I go halfway and this time three, 
Um, I'm always choosing the, the second value after the half, right? The half would be right here, but, but this is even, so we need to pick uh, this guy. And now I'm looking for four. Well, I say, okay, it has to be to the right of three. There's nothing to the right of three. And I'm done. How many steps did that, 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 did that take? Well, it took me one step to reduce the array from eight to four. So I'll write this up here, right? So here's my array. It took me one step to reduce it from eight to four. And a second step to reduce it from four to two. And a third step to reduce it from two to one. One, two, three. This is another, this is actually a log n search algorithm. So uh, our linear search was O n. I have to look through every value. This is now O log of n and it's log base two. Because every time, because I'm using the sorted structure of the array, I can make the problem half as small. I look halfway through the array and I decide what part, I, ba I basically, you can think of it, I break the array into two pieces and because the data is sorted, by looking at the piece that's in the middle, I can decide which subarray it should be in. So if it's less than the midpoint, it, it, it would be in the left subarray, if it's in the array. If it's greater than it'd be the right subarray, and I can keep doing this over and over again. And so the cool thing, again, you know, we, we mentioned that sorting is a primitive that we use in a bunch of other algorithms. And here's one example of that, where you know I'm actually able to sort a very large array. And this is, I mean, log n, is actually really, really fast, right? You might think, oh, you know, like how much better than log n? How much better is uh, log n than n? Well, for eight, log n is three, where their n is eight, okay? For 1024, log n is 10. 1024, log n is 10. For, for a thousand, log n is 10. For a million, log n is about 100, right? Or, sorry, 20. Uh, no, no I'm, I'm wrong. For a million, it's about 20. So it, it's, it, log n is, is growing much, much more slowly than n. And so being able to search for something in log n rather than n is a huge, huge, very substantial speed up. The, the, the trick here is maintaining things in sorted order. And as uh, you're going to see in you know, another video, this is why, for example, a dictionary maintains things in a sorted order. You may already have implemented an algorithm like this on a dictionary before if you're looking for a word. You open it about halfway, look at what page you're on, before or after, halfway, before or after, and you can do that same algorithm on a dictionary. And what you know is that actually it converges pretty quickly. At some point, you get to the end and you're sort of flipping through pages because you're not a computer and you don't do it all the way down. But a computer would, and it's quite fast. So, so again, let me walk through another example just to, to, to finish up. So let's fill this data with, and this time I'll, I'll kind of draw, try to draw it out a little bit better since there's no cat here interfering. 0, 5, 7, 9, 11, 22, 24, 60. And let's say I'm looking for uh, the value 25, right? Um, and so what, well actually no, let's not do 25, let's do like 13. So I pick a value in the middle of the array. I could pick either nine or 11, I'll pick 11. And I say is, is 13, so essentially that divides the array into two parts, this part and this part. So I say is, is 13 greater than 11 or less than 11? If it was less, if the value I was looking for was less than 11, I would need to look in the first subarray, but it's greater than 11, so I look in the second subarray. Now, if I find the value at any given point, I stop immediately. So if the, the value I happen to pick is the one I'm looking for, then I'm done, I can return true. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue looking through this smaller subarray. And this is why some of you will develop a recursive solution to this, because this is a problem that has a very nice recursive structure. I'm essentially starting over searching a smaller array. So again, I'm looking for 13. So I picked the midpoint. The midpoint is 24. So is 13 less or greater than 24? It's less than. And so now I need to look in this subarray. Okay, 22. I pick, tw I pick 22, is it less than or greater than 22? It's less than, and so I need to look in this subarray. And now I've got a base case because this subarray has only one item in it. So I check to see if the item is the item I'm looking for. If it is, I'm done. If it's not, I return false, right? Either way, I'm finished, right? If this has the value, I'm finished. If it doesn't have the value, I'm also finished uh, because this is the only place in the array that 13 could be. It has to be at this particular location.
Okay, so uh, good luck implementing binary search.